Well, we've seen a massive switch of standards over the last couple of years. Um, so for, for many years, we've been using trastuzumab, pertuzumab and chemotherapy as, as first-line therapy and TDM1, the first antibody drug conjugate available in breast cancer, as second-line therapy. Um, now, based upon the data from the Destiny Breast 3 trial, trastuzumab deruxtecan is the new standard in second-line therapy because it has been to, to massively improve progression-free survival over, over TDM1 to more than two years. Um, and in the third line setting, you would usually go to the triple combination of the tyrosine kinase inhibitor to cut the nip in combination with capecitabine and tristizumab. Um, I guess there are two major challenges out there. One is um, patients will eventually progress on these treatments as well, and, and, and therefore we need novel treatment strategies in later lines in order to improve outcome for these patients. And then, of course, there is the brain metastasis story. And, and there are two issues there, basically. One is the treatment of patients with brain metastasis. Um, so we are trying to, to prevent whole brain radiotherapy with its late neurocognitive decline. Um, rather go for, for focal radiotherapy where meaningfully possible. We've recently seen that, that systemic treatment works as well here. Um, Tocatinib has, of course, the best data from a prospective randomized trial, the her 2 climb study, but we've also have uh, seen accumulating evidence that tristuzumab deruxtecan has considerable intracranial evidence from, from, from DEBRA, the, the retrospective North American cohorts, and Taxido-1. Um, but again, new treatment options are needed here as well. And it would be really important to see if, if there is any treatment option out there that could prevent the development of brain metastasis, which of course would be of, of, of major interest because brain metastasis will, will increase morbidity and mortality massively.